Hey Happy Friday, this week the Fairphone 5 really impressed me, Lenovo showed off some really innovative gaming technologies, and Google killed off yet another service. Oh Google, welcome to the Friday Checkout. <music> This video was sponsored by Brilliant. Okay, this week so much happened that I don't think we can call this segment The Brief anymore. We actually have to call it The Long, which is weird, but here we go. First, Apple announced its next event, scheduled for September the 12th, where the company will launch the iPhone 15 series, including maybe a first ever iPhone Ultra, as well as some new Apple Watches. USB-C, here we come. Not to be left behind, Google also quickly announced its next event for the Pixel 8 series that will happen on October 4th, so I guess they're trying to keep their distance from the Apple event. And meanwhile, Sony actually launched the Sony Xperia 5 Mark V today, which is its more compact flagship at 6.1 inches. The device still has high-end specs, and so if you want a smaller phone, this might be worth your look. Next, Oppo announced the Find N3 Flip in China, which now comes with an alert slider taken from OnePlus phones, Hasselblad branded cameras, and a MediaTek Dimensity 9200. Not bad, though that outer screen suddenly looks a little dated now. And also launched this week was the Huawei Mate 60 Pro, but Huawei did their launch in a really odd way. There was no launch event and no ads, and the pre-order pages didn't even say what processor the phone was using. Since then, we've learned from leakers and reviewers that it's probably the new Kirin 9000S chip, which would be Huawei's first self-designed mobile chip in many years, and apparently it even comes with a Malian 910 GPU, which would be the company's first ever self-designed GPU. The details are very scarce, but this could be a pretty big deal because it implies that Huawei actually managed to get a mass market chip manufactured for a flagship phone, presumably in China, for the first time. From what I can tell, the Kirin 9000S kind of benchmarks like a sort of three-year-old chip, so it's not exactly the bleeding edge. I guess it uses the seven nanometer manufacturing process that's available in China, so it's not gonna take over the world, but I guess it could be the beginning of a sort of comeback. Then another piece of drama this week was a supposed leak claiming that Asus would end the Zenfone series, putting in jeopardy one of the last remaining compact flagships. But since then, Asus posted an official statement saying that actually no, those were fake news and they are totally committed to the Zenfone 10 and the 11. Phew. Also this week, Motorola showed off a new feature where if you plug their new ThinkPhone into a USB-C monitor, you can have it automatically open up a Microsoft 365 desktop, which is basically Windows 11 streamed from the Microsoft Cloud. The experience was kind of choppy in our demo, but I guess this could be interesting for the right kind of enterprise user. And finally, for this long brief, we have some good news about the e-bike company FunMove. The struggling company that has recently declared bankruptcy has now apparently been saved. They were bought by a company called Lavoie. This is an electric scooter company that is actually owned by McLaren Applied. Yes, that McLaren, although this is a Formula One engineering spin-off, if I understand correctly, and they said yesterday that they bought the bankrupt company to invest, to stabilize, and expand its business, so let's see what happens. Okay, for my first story of the week, we have the Fairphone 5, which has really taken on the rest of the industry by offering up to 10 years of support. So the phone, as usual, comes with kind of mid-range specs, but with some pretty major upgrades over the 4. The display is now a 90Hz OLED panel, and is also higher resolution, while also having smaller bezels versus the 60Hz LCD on the 4. Charging was also bumped to a pretty decent 30 watts, up from 20. The replaceable battery has gained an extra 300 mAh, so it's now 4,200. Storage was doubled to 256 gigs. There are new camera sensors, including a larger 50 megapixel main shoot and there is a strange new processor too. It's called the Qualcomm QCM6490, and the performance is supposedly a big step up from the last generation, so the phone is now roughly in the upper mid-range category, putting it slightly above the Snapdragon 778G. So those are all very significant upgrades over last year, and it means that if you want to have a really sustainable phone, then this option is now no longer terrible. It's actually kind of okay. Of course, the recycled materials, the fair working conditions, and the repairability are still the main selling points of this device, and you can simply and conveniently swap out all the components yourself, and you can even order 11 different components directly from the company for pretty reasonable prices. The battery is about 40 euros, the display is 100, the USB-C port is less than 20, etc. But the most impressive part is that the company now offers a 5, I repeat, 5-year warranty, and that they're committed to 5 major Android version upgrades and an insane 8 to 10 years of security patches depending on how cooperative Qualcomm proves to be. That is 
unprecedented. And this really long support cycle is probably the reason for them using this really weird chip from Qualcomm. The Qualcomm QCM6490 processor is apparently an industrial chip usually used in IoT devices, but apparently Qualcomm updates these for much longer than regular Snapdragons, hence why it was chosen. The phone costs almost 700 euros, and I'm sure that the camera and the battery life are only going to be okay at best, but this is by far the best looking Fairphone that we've seen so far. Hey, Editing Martin here. My researcher Tristan actually talked to the CEO of Fairphone recently, and so we have some new updates that I also wanted to add to this episode. First, apparently, despite having butted heads many times in the past, Qualcomm and Fairphone are now really good partners, they love each other, and they actually chose this new processor together for their specific use case of longevity. Second, Fairphone is apparently trying to convince Qualcomm to make replaceable kind of modular SOCs. You know how in a desktop computer you can just plop out the CPU and plop in a new one? maybe like a socket or something like that. You can upgrade over time or fix it if it's broken, something like that. I find it very hard to imagine in a smartphone, but I guess the idea is there and Qualcomm is apparently at least listening. And third, we also learned that the new Fairphones are apparently made by TCL. That's right, the company that made the Alcatel phones, the Blackberry revival, and the company that now also sells phones under its own name. I didn't even know that they were an OEM to begin with that made phones for others. Anyway, those are the updates, back to regular Martin. Okay, for my second story of the week, I actually checked out all the new devices that Lenovo announced at IFA, and I'm pretty optimistic about these. Lenovo's biggest release at the show was definitely the Legion Go. This is like an Asus ROG Ally in that it runs Windows 11 and also uses the same AMD Ryzen Z1 Extreme processor, but it has a larger and nicer 8.8 inch 144 Hz IPS screen, plus some really neat design tweaks. The screen looks really nice and the controllers come off Nintendo Switch style. The controllers felt pretty good in person and there are tons of buttons on it everywhere and even a scroll wheel, but weirdly enough, one of these controllers even has a sensor on it like a mouse. And so if you place it into this included plastic accessory, it actually turns into a wireless mouse. I don't know, bit gimmicky, but creative, I guess. Anyway, the whole device felt surprisingly light and reasonably well built for being such a big chunker. And the kickstand is pretty nice too, but the $800 price tag does make it feel a little painful. The device is going on sale in October, but Lenovo also announced a new pair of glasses to go along with the Legion Go. These glasses felt pretty much exactly like what the company demoed last year, except with a Legion logo on top now, as well as with an optional eye correction system that they are working on now. And overall, the idea is that you just plug these into any device that can output an image via USB-C and you start seeing a huge 1080p OLED screen in front of you. Lenovo claims that this especially makes sense on a handheld device like the Legion Go. And while I like that it is literally just handled as an external display, I also think that $500 is just a whole lot of money to ask for this. Okay, and for my third story of the week, Google has actually killed its two-year Pixel Pass subscription after just 22 months of its existence. And if you're now thinking to yourself, wait a minute, I don't even know what a Pixel Pass subscription is. I've never even heard of it. That's kind of the problem. That's Google for you in a nutshell. So when the program launched along with the Pixel 6, the idea was that you would pay a monthly $45 or $55 subscription for a new Pixel phone and also a ton of Google services like YouTube Premium in an all-in-one bundle. Then every two years you'd start a new cycle and get a new Pixel phone as well. So that first full cycle was just about to finish with the launch of the Pixel 8 series, but then Google decided before that happened, they'll actually kill the whole thing. Now, to be fair, the existing subscribers still came out pretty well monetarily, and Google even offered a $100 loyalty reward credit for subscribers, but man oh man, how extremely on brand for Google to kill this right now. Another Google product dead even before its first cycle. And talking of Google being Google, the company also managed to leak its own phone this week, posting an act photo of the Pixel 8 Pro on the actual Google Store, even without text that says, quote, a person takes a call with the Pixel 8 Pro phone in porcelain, in case you didn't recognize the design. Classic Google move. I feel a bunch of people at Google should just go back to school and maybe get better at their jobs. And if they do, here's two classes that I'd actually recommend for them. Logic 101, and then uh, Logic 2, I guess. While I'm obviously making fun of Google, these are unironically great classes for anyone to get better at logical thinking. Whether you could benefit from that in your job or from a refresher in another STEM topic like computer science, statistics, physics, and so on, Brilliant has you covered. They're the best place to learn all of these topics online, and their special sauce is that all their courses are custom designed with interactivity in mind. 
So they take complicated sciencey topics, they break those down into many smaller chunks, they arrange those so that you can progress from beginner levels to advanced ones in little sprints, and then they make you practice what you've just learned in each course with a practice exercise at the end. This interactivity is just way more fun than simply reading a book or watching a video. It also switches your brain from a passive mode into an actively participating mode, so you retain knowledge a lot better. Brilliant has thousands of lessons covering a ton of STEM topics, and new lessons get added every month, so whatever STEM skill it is that you want to get better at, they probably have you covered. You can get a 30-day free trial at brilliant.org TFC, and the first 200 people who sign up using that link will also get 20% off their premium annual subscription if they choose one. So check them out, happy learning, and I'll see you next Friday. Bye.